Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be creating a simple text-based guess the number game in Python. In this game, the computer will randomly select a number between 1 and 100, and the task is to guess that number correctly. The video will contain refreshers on many data types including boolean, strings, and integers. We'll also deal with some string formatting as well as if statements, a while loop, and type conversion, which is just a fancier way of saying converting something to a different data type. We'll also learn about importing modules. Before we dive into the code, let's take a moment to understand what importing means in Python, if you're not familiar with it yet. Python's a versatile programming language with a vast collection of built-in functions and modules. A module is a file containing Python functions and statements that can be used in other programs. Importing a module allows us to access its functions and features, extending Python's capabilities beyond its standard library. In our code, we use the import keyword followed by the name of the module we want to use. This gives us access to the functions and utilities provided by that module. In this mini project, we import the random module by using the line import random. Lucky for us, this Python module comes shipped with Python, so you don't have to download anything from the internet because it's already on your computer. All we have to do is type import random, and when you run your program, Python sees the import and gets the module ready. The random module allows us to generate random numbers, which is essential for creating our simple guessing game. Importing modules is a powerful way to expand the functionality of Python and enables us to build more advanced feature-rich programs. All right, let's dive into our code. So we can import random. In most programs, all the import statements are at the top. So here we have our import statement. Next, let's create a variable called number and set it to a random number between one and 100. We can do this by calling the random module and then its function randint by typing a dot and then randint. This function takes two arguments. We will set it to a number between 1 and 100. This function, as you know, generates a random number. So if we ran this and printed number, it could be 43, for example. And if we ran it again, it could be something like 67. So it's different every time. This is the number that the user will have to guess. Next, let's set a variable called guessed and set that to false. This variable will be set to false at the beginning of the game. And it kind of acts like a flag because we set it to false initially meaning the user hasn't guessed the correct number yet. But once they guess it, this variable will be set to true and the game will end. Next, we'll create a variable called tries and set that to zero. This will keep track of how many attempts the user has made to guess the number. We started at zero and increment it with each guess. Now we need some way to keep the game asking the user for their input until they guess the number. To do this, we can use a while loop. The following while loop will keep running as long as guessed is false. So type while guessed equals false. And so as long as guessed is false, the code that we will write inside this will execute. This is where we'll ask the user to input their guess. Inside the loop, we'll use the input function to prompt the user to enter their guess. We can store their answer in a variable called answer. And with that will be assigned to input, which will ask them to guess the number but between 1 and 100. Now for every iteration of this while loop, we will check to see if their answer is not numeric. If answer dot is numeric is equal to false, then if it's not numeric, we will print please enter an actual number. And then we'll type continue. If you remember, the continue keyword will bring us right back to the start of the loop. Also, we will not add one to the tries variable yet because this doesn't count as a real guess. It was just an invalid input and therefore they'll just have to enter it again. And after this if statement, we will convert answer to the integer version of it. And this is safe to do without an error, because if the answer isn't numeric, it'll continue to the top of the loop. And if it's not, it'll just skip over the if statement and run this, because it's numeric, so it can convert it. So after obtaining the user's guess, we can compare it with the randomly selected number. If the user's guess matches the number, we will print a winning message and update the guessed variable to true, which will end the loop. If it's too high or low, we'll provide the feedback and continue to the next iteration. First, let's see if they guessed correctly. If answer is number, if they match, we'll print and then we'll use some F string formatting here and say you win, you guess number, like this. Next, we'll print using percent formatting to say how many times it took the user. It took you percent s tries. And then outside of here, we do percent and then tries. Using two different kinds of string formatting, for 
Two similar statements isn't really good practice in programming, but I wanted to refresh your memory on both types of these formatting. Lastly, since they guessed it, we will set guessed equal to true. And when the loop checks to see if guess is false, once it gets back to the top, it'll just stop. Now, if the user didn't guess it, we want to give them hints like guess higher or guess lower. So if they guessed higher than the number, so greater than number, then we can print guess lower. And then everything else, which would just be if they guessed uh, lower than the number, then we say guess higher. And then lastly, since the elif and else are both part of this if statement, only one of these three will end up executing. So once one of them are done, it moves to the end of this entire block of code. And this means that we can now increment tries by one, instead of putting it in all three of these if statements. So this is our final code. And so now if we run this, we can see that it says guess the number between one and 100. And if I were to type a bunch of random letters, I would say, please enter an actual number. And then I type it again. No matter how many times I do this, it keeps telling me to enter an actual number. And so if I do that, like 50, it says guess slower. Okay, so we'll do 30, 40, 45, 44, and then I guessed it. It took me four tries. That is because over here, these ones don't count because they're just errors. They, they don't really, it wouldn't be fair to count these as tries if they're not even numbers. So we go down here, we do 50, one, two, three, four, and it took us four tries. This is because after every single iteration of this loop, tries is added by one. And so while guest is false, right? Guest is only true when you win. So that means that it ended. And it's still incremented by one because it still had to go to the end of the loop and it only checks once it gets back to the top. Congratulations, you've just created a simple guessing game using Python. In this project, we used the random module to select a random number, and we learned how to use a while loop to create an interactive guessing experience. I hope you had fun with this mini project. Feel free to modify and expand upon it to make it even more exciting and challenging. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.